Peggy Whitson and Jack Fisher went on the 200th spacewalk to replace a large avionics box that supplied the electricity and data connection to the science experiments and replacement hardware stored outside the station. The two had a shortened spacewalk due to a small leak detected in the second SCU connected to Fisher's suit. Uh, the SCU is an airlock component that provides electricity, cooling, and communications to the crew. Sharing the SCU caused additional battery draw and reduce the battery power available for the rest of the spacewalk. Uh, but everything was all good and went well from what I saw. Teamwork was really amazing to watch and listen. ESA astronaut Tomas was great with the robotic arm and the cameras. You know, I haven't been this excited to watch an astronaut uh, with a camera since Scott Kelly and before that, Chris Hadfield. Uh, you know, it was really fascinating to think about the situation that they were all in. Uh, they've been training for this mission for years, and they've been through all the steps and all the movements before. And now they're performing this microgravity ballet of repairs outside the space station. You know, it tells me a lot about the caliber of human being that becomes an astronaut. That, you know, the work ethic, the belief in one's own abilities, and the passion to do something only hundreds of human beings have ever done before. Also, a sense of humor seems to be a staple, uh, which is great to see. Uh, you need humor in the void of interstellar space. What better way to shrug off space weirdness than with a few laughs? So, congratulations to the team that conducted the 200th spacewalk, Peggy Whitson, Jack Fisher, and everyone else who was involved on board to help this mission go flawlessly. Back down on Earth, NASA is currently reviewing 12 proposals for future unmanned solar system exploration. These missions will fall under the New Frontiers program, of which a few of them you already know. New Horizons that went to Pluto, Juno that's at Jupiter, and OSIRIS-REx, which is on its way to the asteroid Bennu as being a part of this whole Frontiers program. NASA encourages both domestic and international scientists to submit mission proposals. The new Frontiers missions are based around having a principal investigator leading the whole plan. I've met the PI for the New Horizons team, Alan Stern. Uh, he's a very nice guy, seems to love what he does, and is very intense and focused, which I like. According to an article written by Bill Keeter on May 5th, 2017, that the goal is to select a mission for flight in about two years with launch in the mid-2020s. An associate administrator for NASA's Science Mission Directorate in Washington was quoted saying, New Frontiers is about answering the biggest questions in our solar system today, building on previous missions to continue to push the frontier of exploration. We're looking forward to reviewing these exciting investigations and moving forward with our next bold mission of discovery. There were only six themes uh, for the investigations this time around. Those mission themes are as followed. A comet surface sample return, the lunar South Pole Aitken Basin sample return, ocean worlds, Titan and or Enceladus, a Saturn probe, yes, a Trojan tour and rendezvous, and Venus in situ explorer. The announcement for the selection of one or more mission concepts for phase A study will begin in November of this year. After that, New Frontiers will select one of the investigations to continue into subsequent mission phases. phases. According to this article, all mission proposals are selected following an extensive competitive peer review process. So it's very interesting to see. The New Frontiers program has done very well with NASA and with the public. Pluto was huge. New Horizons was tremendous. OSIRIS-REx is looking to be like it's going to be a great mission. And Juno, even though it's having issues, is still providing some great data. So it'll be interesting to see what mission gets picked. If I had to choose, I would send, I would pick missions if they were good. If every mission was fantastic, let's just assume that, uh, I would pick one ocean world mission and you know what let's do a comet surface sample return we need to start figuring out how to do that so it's not a bad idea and that does it for this week's show thank you for joining us don't forget to check out our patreon page if you want to learn more about our science communication initiative and see all the rewards you can get for helping support us monthly and help us grow the show subscribe to the podcast on itunes or your favorite podcast player 
and to our YouTube channel as well. Please like and share if you like what we're doing. Every one of those goes a long way towards spreading love and spreading science. Have a great week. We'll talk to you soon.